I'm Dr. Ben Hoyt. I'm an ENT surgeon here in Fredericton. I've been practicing here for 15 years. The traditional ear infection that most people think of that kids get is technically called acute otitis media or a middle ear infection. And that's when you get bacteria or pus behind the eardrum, uh, causing the eardrum to bulge, causing a lot of pain, usually associated with fever, uh, and usually needs antibiotics to treat it. The space behind our eardrums is supposed to be filled with air and it's connected through a tube to our nose. So when we blow our nose really hard and sometimes our ears pop, that's air moving through that tube. People who have small tubes are more likely to have fluid build up behind the ear because it can't drain through that tube. That's why we typically see ear infections in kids because kids have small heads and small heads have small tubes but there are plenty of adults who can get these as well and it usually has more to do with the shape of their head. People, for example, with Down syndrome, uh, part of Down syndrome involves a small face and because they have small bones in their face, they have a small tube, so they're more prone to getting them as well. But it really boils down to the shape of the tube that drains the ear space. The most common symptom is pain, but you can get pain in the ear from a lot of different things. In order to have an ear infection, you have to have pain in the ear, you have to have fever, and we have to see pus behind your eardrum when we examine your ear. And without those three things, then you do not have an ear infection. An ear infection can last a very long time if left untreated. Uh, typically, an ear infection will build over 24 to 48 hours, and in extreme cases, the pus will build to the point that the eardrum can even rupture and then the pus starts to drain out of the ear canal. Believe it or not, that's just the body's way of treating the ear infection. It relieves the pressure, it drains the infection, and that helps patients naturally get better. But in an ideal world, we'd like to get at them sooner and treat them with antibiotics before that happens. A patient comes in with an ear infection. Uh, once we've confirmed that it's actually an infection and not ear pain from another source, we would treat with antibiotics. The antibiotics would typically be seven to 10 days. The infection would typically resolve. We would then follow up, re-examine the ear and make sure that the fluid has fully drained. There are many cases where the fluid hasn't drained yet. Doesn't mean you need more antibiotics, just means normally that you need, you need more time. After three months, if that fluid hasn't drained, we would consider draining it for you with tubes in the ears. Or if you're getting infections over and over and over and needing a lot of antibiotics, we would also consider putting tubes in in that instance. Ear infections are going to happen in kids. One in three children are going to suffer with ear infections. It's really difficult to avoid ear infections. Most of the risk factors you can't really fix or change. Ear infections in and of themselves don't cause hearing loss. Fluid behind the eardrum causes hearing loss while the fluid is there. It'd be the same as plugging your ears. Your ears are blocked because of that fluid and the sound can't get through. But as soon as that fluid drains, either naturally or we drain it for you surgically, the hearing typically comes back to normal. The only time that we see hearing loss in uh, patients with ear infections are in patients with chronic and poorly or untreated ear infections. Those patients are more apt to form chronic perforations or holes in their eardrum which can then affect hearing uh, in the long term. With ear infections, we normally encourage people to seek medical care if they've had ear pain and a fever for 24 to 48 hours. Uh, if they just have ear pain and no fever, then I wouldn't rush to the doctor for several days at least. If they have fever and no ear pain, it's not necessarily an ear infection, it could be anything. Uh, but if you have that combination of ear pain and a fever for 24 to 48 hours, then a patient should be assessed.